The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Must have soup. The pancake is to die for. <laughs> It was a gut bomb, but I loved it. Good. I actually fantasize in private moments about the food I had. I didn't like it. You didn't like it? <laughs> oh, okay. Dining here makes me feel rich. And what about dessert? Pecan pie, sweet potato pie. Mm. <laughs> Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, Deputy Attorney General Amber Whipfler defends her pick as a place for vegetarians as well as omnivores. She's witnessed two generations of the Fady family running the restaurant and happily pleads for its menu, and talent agent Tom Kelly scouts far and wide for the lead in his restaurant repertoire. There's no rehearsal needed for a romantic dinner at his pick. But first, SAP consultant Yuli Hartono hails from Indonesia. She's proud of her country's cuisine and after much searching has finally found the place that can satisfy her homesick tummy. It's on Post Street at Jones in San Francisco and it's called Borobudur Restaurant. Borobudur is the name of the Buddhist temple in central Java. We use a lot of spices for the Indonesian cooking like coriander, turmeric, candle nut, galanga, bay leaf, or lemongrass. Many of them take a lot of time to prepare it or to cook it. And usually after we cook it, we let it stand overnight to, so it will come more flavorful. I would like to introduce Indonesian food to American people, so the culture, we can bring it to the Bay Area. Indonesian food influenced by Indian, China, and Thai, as well as Malaysia. The spices that we're using almost same with the Thai food, but the way we cook it is different with the Thai food. Now, Yuli, you say that this place reminds you of home. It truly has Indonesian flair. Yes, it does. The Indonesian food in this restaurant, um, I cannot find anywhere else in the cities of the United States. And I have traveled in a lot of cities in the United States in search of my favorite food. Because I've been away from home since I was 12. And so far, this is the best that I have seen. What should people order when they get there to feel comfortable with Indonesian cuisine? First of all, Indonesian cuisine is usually shared family style. Mm -hmm. So usually everybody has a dish of rice by their side and then everybody just pick on the main dishes on the table. We usually have vegetables and meats and um, there's really no such thing as appetizers per se. Mm -hmm. uh, the main thing about Indonesian dishes, dishes is that we have condiments. Like the oh, shrimp yeah, yeah, yeah. and the shrimp paste, chili paste. paste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, chili paste. That was Wait, great. Really? You liked it? Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, that's nice. I, I, I can say I'd never had green beans with shrimp paste before. <laughs> I've never had anything with shrimp paste, I think, or unless someone didn't. And there's also fried rice with shrimp paste. Mm hmm. Did you get that? No, no, no. Uh -uh. See, I have to go back and order all of these things. <laughs> I was blown away by everything. Were so. you you enjoyed the the different flavors and the, the I combinations? Loved it. I I didn't know what to expect. I really didn't. I, I in all of my worldliness, I didn't know Indonesian <laughs> food very well. But I didn't know what to expect, and I was I was blown away by how there are so many flavors, and they're all woven together. I was mm -hmm. just sitting there every time, just going, like, I can't identify that. I don't know what that is either. The, the flavors were completely unique, mm -hmm. and. And for me, um, I don't eat meat. And when I saw something called the soybean cake, I figured <laughs> I figured it was tofu. You know, I mean, right. every other menu, yeah, yeah, soybean cake, it's tofu. <laughs> and it wasn't. It was this. It was just this amazing chewy tempeh that mm -hmm. has that's got a flavor that's definitely not like tofu. Um, and it was fantastic. Just something very unique. And even the person I was with, who's a avowed carnivore, even even he was very fond of it. Because sometimes you have to work to get tempeh to. Tastes good. To be good. Yeah. 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 What else did you have, Tom, when you were there? Well, we didn't know what to order because, I mean, the, the menu was overwhelming when we first took a look at it. I mean, where do you start? So we started with the rice tofu. 
Is oh, that yes, that's actually yeah, Again, you have to help us with the dish okay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give us the name, no, please. What she's talking about is actually uh, not Indonesian, it's Dutch. Indonesia was colonized by the Dutch for 450 oh. years or so. So rich tafel is something that I actually brought to Indonesia. So it's basically like rice, and they come with a lot of many small dishes. So you can try everything. And say it again, rich tafel? Rich tafel. Oh. I might not say it correct because I'm not Dutch. Yeah. So, but it, it really literally means rice table. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have a rice and a lot of small dishes. And usually with the rich tafel, they also serve you a cracker. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? We, um, we got oh, shorted right. on the cracker. Oh, okay. <laughs> but but they brought out a cup of soup to start out, and I was blown away. So I must have soup. <laughs> it was so good. We, we just had to order big bowls of that Is before we. Is it Soto Batavi? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was, yes. It was lemongrass and chicken. And yes. So, uh, oh, soto ayam then. Yes. Because that's the ayam oh, is chicken. It was right. remarkable. The, the lemongrass. Oh my God. I mean, you can right as you open the door, you mm -hmm. just you get the wave of it. It's like coconut milk and lemongrass and just. Oh, it was. I'm so glad you guys. Oh it. yeah. <laughs> well, we haven't said that yet. The, well, soup, <laughs> the soup was remarkable. You like, yeah. you like the soup. What else did you guys have? We had um, we ordered an additional lamb curry mm -hmm. and a shrimp curry and then the green beans with the with the shrimp, shrimp paste mm -hmm. and everything was remarkable. I just he kept there was only one waiter working there yes. when we first got there and he just kept bringing the the table was was just overflowing with things I wasn't even familiar with and everything was delicious. just, it just, I don't know, there were just flavors, I still don't know what they are. The best curry that they have would be the rendang, I mm -hmm. think. That, that's actually uh, pretty common in Southeast Asian mm -hmm. cuisine. But they made it really good here, it's tender. And um, I don't think it's too spicy, it's just right. It's a little bit sweet and it's really good with rice. Mm -hmm. And uh, Soto Batawi is actually a more adventurous soto than uh, the chicken. Right. Because it's actually made of tripe. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So they have tribe instead of chicken. <laughs> so it's, it's <laughs> I like the first one. <laughs> <laughs> and I could see his face going. No, 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 not me. Yet. <laughs> and for vegetarian, I would recommend the uh, vegetable sampler. Mm -hmm. And they have corn fritters and tempeh and fried tofu. Loved the corn and, fritters. Oh my god! And it had just the right amount of heat. I yeah. mean, it was definitely it, it definitely had a kick at the end, but not so much that we were you know running running for the water. Yes. <laughs> Did you feel like it delivered value? Oh, definitely. For un well under twenty dollars a piece, we ate ourselves silly, yes. and that and that and that included. Um, I want to mention one of those, um, one of those interesting the drinks? fruit drinks. The yeah, drinks. Oh, with, 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 it was sh the shaved ice, coconut milk. Um, oh. I think some mango and maybe. Yeah, I, Indonesia doesn't really have dessert. Usually, we have little cakes. These are more like snacks yeah. for us. But our dessert is shaved ice. It was so good. <laughs> I was right. really. So yeah. next time you can go back yeah. and, and experience more. No, I have to go back. Yeah. All right. Well, this is your restaurant, Yuli. So yes. give us a quick wrap up. If you want to a taste of Indonesia without having to travel half around the world, then come to Borobudur. <laughs> All right. And what about you? Oh, if if you want to experience something completely different, a type of a type of food that's that's totally new, and if you're like me and you don't eat meat, um, something where you can have a full menu of all sorts of protein options, then definitely give it a try. Okay, and Tom? Oh, uh, a wild symphony of exotic Asian flavors that's just blended together exquisitely. I, I was just very impressed with it. I will. I want to go back and try everything on there. Yay! <laughs> high praise, high praise. I do. <laughs> if you would like to try Boro Bador Restaurant, it's on Post at Jones in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-775-1512. It's open for lunch and dinner every day. Reservations are accepted, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $20. As a vegetarian, Amber is often faced with limited choices, but at her favorite Spanish restaurant, there's variety, texture, and flavor, and plenty of options. It's on Lombard Street in San Francisco, and it's called Alegria's Spanish Restaurant. When I opened Alegrías, uh, my intention was to form an ambiance like in Spain, where people come to have good food, to share a lot of different flavors and socialize. 
sometimes people said, why an Argentinian have a Spanish restaurant? And I said, well, I come from a family of 12 from Spain, and I grew up with them in the food from Spain. And that's the reason that I have this tapas restaurant. As a family of immigrants, we decide to work all together. Everyone have his own duties. I handle the kitchen, my wife handle the front, Josephine managed the whole thing, and my son handled all the big parties. Alegrías is uh, different from other tapas place because I cook the old rustic traditional tapas from Spain. Today, there are so many young people in the kitchens that they want to put the modern touch. And uh, for me, that changed the character. What Alegrías have is the traditional flavor of Spain. Now, Amber, do you ever find that you have a challenging time eating out as a vegetarian? It can be tough. There's You're not a vegan. Not a vegan, okay. but, a, but a strict ovo-lacto vegetarian. Mm -hmm. And it, it, can be, it can be challenging. Generally, when I do go to a restaurant, if they do have something, it's generally you have one option. Right. And which, you know, is, isn't a big deal, but it's nice to be able to go out and get variety. Mm -hmm. That said, you know, it's, it's nice when you're not limited to bean sprouts and tofu, right. <laughs> because there's... Which you're not at Alegrias. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely not. The, the best part about the tapas is that it's that shared experience of right. dining with someone and really, really sharing those flavors and that food. And that's, and that's the best part about a tapas restaurant is that you get to, you get to experience all these, all these little dishes. Not too much, not enough to you know, eat yourself silly, but just enough to get, to get a bite, to get that flavor. And right. not feel guilty. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's no calories. Guilty. Exactly, <laughs> none, of course. <laughs> so what did you have, Tom, when you went? Oh, uh, we, we decided, like we did at Boro Budur, to order a lot of different things. We went for the tapas, and um, a, we, I was not quite as impressed with, with, we got a lot of the standards mm -hmm. that, that were pretty good, but not great. We had the um, tortilla mm -hmm. um, de española, mm -hmm. and um, I, I really, really, really love the patatas. We, d we usually, at a tapas place, get the patatas bravas, but mm -hmm. these were with aioli, yes. and the aioli was, <laughs> <laughs> that was an aioli. That's addictive stuff right yeah, there. That was great. And the, um, the piquillo peppers stuffed with lamb, mm -hmm. I thought those were great. The, um, they did a spinach dish that, mm -hmm. that just uh, sounded great on the page, but it, it didn't come off at all. Really? Because yeah. the spinach is one of my favorites. I know, I, it's a great idea. It's just the, the, I mean, just this perfect blanched spinach with the, with the crunchy pine nuts, and the, then it's got some poached apples and the juicy raisins. I just, I love that combination. Uh, I maybe think it's we fantastic. went on a, a, a dry night, I don't know. <laughs> and what about you, Yuli? Did you uh, have a good experience there? Yeah, I love sangrias. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get to the food? <laughs> Their sangria is a little bit sweet too. It's got a, yeah. you know, not overwhelmingly sweet. Just like just this one, it's really good. It's yeah. not very tart, which right. I like. Because mm -hmm. one of the things I don't like about one is being tart. So sangria was really good, and but service was really exceptional. Mm. We came, my party came late, and yet I was seated right away. But that's the great thing about that restaurant yeah. is that it's yeah. so yeah, low key. It's very and for nice. me, and my friend said, it's not even, it doesn't even feel like a restaurant. It's instead of going out to a restaurant for dinner, it felt more like you were sitting down for dinner in your With Aunt your Lupita's friend. living exactly. room or something. And I think I mean, that's the, the flavor yeah. they want you to yeah. have. And yeah. It, yeah. Like you're going home. Right. And I think that that's really, you can tell that it's run by a family mm -hmm. because that, that's the sort of experience I think that they want you to have. Mm -hmm. that you know when on any night you know you'll you'll be you'll be seated by the daughter or the mother your waiter okay. your waiter will be the son you know the the patriarch of the family is in is in the back mm -hmm. you know cooking up the paella that's right and, and that's I think a specialty of theirs paella croquettes mm -hmm. croquettes the, uh, empanadas yeah, yeah. The, i think i think the vegetarian paella that is the that is the first vegetarian paella that i have ever seen in San Francisco right. and which which is unique and then if you can if you can finish it off with a cafe con leche and one of the one of the crepes the dulce de leche crepe well, oh my I, goodness I, I have the crepe and it was really impressive when we saw it on the other table flaming and everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and but when we come to our table and, it, and we love the flame so much we let it die out and it left a burnt taste on it uh. and uh. and I, we figured maybe next time maybe we shouldn't let it burn out and they're known for the croquettes as well definitely yes we've um, had those before and and I think also the um, empanadillas right. we had those um, yeah, sort of an ode to good. his uh, you yes know, to Argentina, Argentina. Yeah. to Buenos Aires <laughs> uh, I love I'm 
I'm told that they um, that when the chef goes to Argentina, he he actually he brings back the spices just mm -hmm. just for those empanadas right. to get right. that wonderful smoky paprika flavor. It's really an escape from some of the more pretentious areas of the marina. Um, you know, no offense to the marina, but there's, <laughs> it's not. It's definitely we'll get emails. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, you know, it's not for anyone. But this mm -hmm. this is the type of place where you don't you don't need to worry about going there to be seen or whether you're wearing the right outfit. It's just... And you can have a conversation exactly. there, which I, yes. I, that was the one thing I was very impressed with about that. You know how you go to most restaurants in San Francisco in order to have a conversation, you need a, a degree in advanced lip reading because yes. you just, I mean, we could talk at this level and, and actually understand each other. All right, Amber, this is your spot, so give us a quick summary. Alegres is a place where you can get authentic Spanish food in a very relaxed, romantic atmosphere. and. You know, I've been going there for 12 years now and hope to be going there for another 12. All right, and Yuli, would you go back? Yes, it's, it has great atmosphere, excellent service, and yummy sangrias. I would go back. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom, what about you? Uh, I don't think it's going to be one of my destination places. I mean, I'm not going to crawl over broken glass to get to Alegrias, but you know, if, I, if, if I'm in the neighborhood and I want a quiet, very, uh, you know, a s solid, good, meal and I can and if I need to whisper something to somebody at the table too <laughs> I'll go back there <laughs> all right if you would like to try Alegrias Spanish restaurant it's on Lombard Street at Webster in San Francisco the telephone number is 415-929-8888 it's open for dinner every day except Tuesday reservations are recommended and the average tab per person without drinks is around $30 At the foot of a hillside hotel, an amber glow floods through the windows of a classic Italian trattoria. Tables spill out onto the sidewalk on sunny days, making it the perfect setting for a leisurely dining experience. It's on Bridgeway in Sausalito, and it's called Poggio. For the last 40 years, I have been going to Italy almost every year because of remarkable food not just in the big cities of Italy, but especially in the countryside. And that's what we've tried to do at Poggio. Our pasta is made here by hand every day. We serve fish as well, and they're served whole. And we cook with wood, not gas. We're fortunate at Poggio in that we have our own organic garden. And our chef, Peter McNee, goes up into that garden and whatever's fresh, whatever's available, that's what gets on our menu each night. The neighborhood restaurant in Italy doesn't just serve great food, locally sourced food, but also it doesn't charge an arm and a leg so that you can use that restaurant as though it was your own kitchen and lots of our customers do. Tom, you think this is a romantic spot, isn't it? Well, yes, let's <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll see you ladies later. <laughs> Poggio, Poggio, Poggio. It's, it's just one of those restaurants that just, I don't know, it just fires on all cylinders for me, from the, right. the atmosphere to the staff that's just so wonderful to the star of the show, which is the food. It just is one of those places that I have gone to for years, and I just adore it. I really do. It, it, Poggio translates roughly, very roughly, to a special place on a hillside, which is, you might find odd because the restaurant is actually on water level. Yeah, right, right. But, yeah. It's right by the hotel. And you <laughs> but think up it could behind be <laughs> in the hills of Sausalito is an organic garden, Poggio's own organic garden. and Which from Chef Peter McNee uses um, quite adeptly. Those salads that come out of there are just, I, I'm happy with warm bread, a salad. I mean, Sausalito is beautiful, and it's it's a lovely place to take a stroll before, after mm -hmm. dinner. When we, when we got in, we were seated right away, mm -hmm. and I mean, 
you can't help but notice just how perfectly the decor is put together. And it's a large it's, restaurant, so there's yeah, room actually to, definitely. Feels to go. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And they, they have the tables that are spilling out onto the sidewalk. So I imagine that during lunch you could have a really nice little outdoor cafe type experience. I had the, the roasted butternut squash soup, yes. which was had kind of a, a dollop of uh, creme fraiche on mm. top and some, some hazelnuts. And just so sweet and rich, and then with that little kick of cream at the end, just so soup is so simple. It, sh it, right. it shouldn't be that good when it has that <laughs> few ingredients, but there you go. And they have a wine program, actually. They have a, a quite an extensive wine program and have their own bottled, their own Poggio wines, which I can imagine one of the, the whites they had a Roussan would have been fantastic with that. Yeah, well, <laughs> the entire the entire back side of the restaurant is one giant wine cabinet. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's very Tom, impressive. That's, that's Tom Town back there. I always sit back there just because I like to glance lovingly <laughs> just up to, at the, Just to glance at the bottles. Yes, I just want to have them near me. As we were driving, um, you know, we opened the window a little bit and I can smell the burning firewood and it was, you know, really sets the tone for the whole night, you know. So I mean, we get there, we get there a little early. But uh, we were seated right away. Again, the service is excellent. Um, and the waiter that uh, we had, he was really nice and friendly. And they really know their menu, yeah. every ingredient, mm -hmm. um, and, and the wine to match. And the wine to match. Well, and what, what do you normally get when you go there? Well, I have to start with the salad there. Mm -hmm. I mean, first, when you first go there, they bring out a basket of their, right. their rosemary warm bread. Oh, the homemade. rosemary with just a little bit of salt. Right. Where, oh, my God. That's enough right there, but I don't stop there. <laughs> um, they make an endive or endive, on since this is a romantic <laughs> evening <laughs> here. And, and, <laughs> an endive salad there that's got arugula and, and gorgonzola cheese okay. and hazelnuts and apples uh, drizzled with a little honey. Ay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. You're having a moment. Oh, yeah, I can't right now. It's, and what about the pizzas? So I had a pizza margarita, mm -hmm. and it's basically just cheese and basil. Basically. And yeah, <laughs> and I would Pretty have liked to have thing. more things on it. I think it would have been nice, but the crust was really good. I yeah. usually don't eat pasta there because there's just so, so much to eat there, and I never get to the pasta. But right. the other night I was there, and I had house made square cut spaghetti with. Uh, Dungeness crab and saffron. That was a knockout. I mean, it was just, I just kept eating it. And my, my uh, dining partner had a fish, uh, a seafood uh, stew that had mussels and shrimp. That's what and I have. Really? Mm -hmm. What I was most impressed with was that there was, I was, that they had a vegetarian secondi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, that was a first for me. Mm -hmm. And again, something, something so simple and, and so perfect. It was, five vegetables laid out. Something, again, something that simple has no right to be that good, but <laughs> I think it just shows that a, a perfectly cooked vegetable is a beautiful, beautiful thing. A thing of beauty. <laughs> when ingredients matter. Exactly, right. exactly. And, and aren't fussed up. Definitely, and you know, as far as, far as the service goes, we, um, my fiance and I let it slip uh, to the manager that it was, we had, we went there for our third anniversary, and they and they actually they, they brought us out dessert with candles oh. the vanilla gelato with the espresso shot poured over it, it. I which them. I mean how honestly I mean how can you go wrong with coffee right. and ice cream I mean I, I I can't think of a way and they add this the candied orange peel is what what really really does it which is which is a flavor that on its own is just far too strong I mean right. it you know just just thinking about it you get that orange peel like you know it works. flavor you, yikes you don't want to think about it but you know, but with the the strong bitter coffee and the sweet and the sweet ice cream, it just it matched so beautifully. Perfecto. Exactly. <laughs> what she said. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tom. This is your restaurant, so um, tell everyone why they need to go to Poggio. Poggio is elegance and it's uh, exquisitely prepared northern Italian food in a charming, charming setting. All right, Amber. Uh, no detail is overlooked at Poggio, everything from the decor to the wine list and then, of course, the food. So there's there's nothing missing. <laughs> All right, and Yuli? It is very romantic, great service, and I would go back on a summer day <laughs> and sit outside. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> If you would like to try Poggio, it's in the Madrona Hotel on Bridgeway in Sausalito. The telephone number is 415-332-7771. It's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $35. Well, I have to thank my great guests on this week's show, <laughs> Yuli Hartono, Amber Whipfler, and Tom Kelly. 
Yuli's Indonesian homestyle pick of Borobudur restaurant was entirely new to Amber, who recommends it as a must-try spot to Bay Area foodies looking for something deliciously different. And Tom wants to return to explore the menu further. Next, Amber's Alegrias. For Tom, it was tasty, but without the wow effect, while Yuli had a wonderful time with great service for a reasonable price. Finally, Tom selected Poggio. Yuli would have liked a slightly larger portions, but <coughs> loved the flavors and the superb service. And Amber plans on spending future anniversaries there. Check our website for the latest restaurant updates. It's where you'll find more discussion, where you can add your comments, and where you can view this and all the shows. Log on to learn about the KQED Wine Club and the delicious wines we've been tasting and drinking today. So don't forget to join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I hope to see you then. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Hey. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Bye, guys. This show is available in high definition, Comcast On Demand, and via podcast. For additional information on the restaurants featured, to comment, or to apply to be on the show, go to our website at kqed.org slash check please. A KQED television production.